This is the injured ring finger of John Collins. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you about what in the world is going on in this picture. What's going on everybody? I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the role of sports. The injury supposedly happened against the Detroit Pistons. And what this picture looks like to me is something called a boutonniere deformity, which results from a tendon injury within the finger. Let's define some basic surface anatomy here. So as we're going across this row of joints, the knuckles, those are gonna be the MCP joints, the metacarpal phalangeal joints. The metacarpals are the bones sitting down here in the palm, and then the phalanges are going to be the finger bones. Moving upwards then, if we look at the index finger for a point of reference here, this joint is going to be the PIP, or the proximal interphalangeal joint, proximal meaning closer to the rest of the body, and then this joint right here is going to be the DIP, or the distal, meaning further away from the body, interphalangeal joint. With a boutonniere deformity, what you end up with is flexion of that PIP joint with extension of that DIP. So if we look at it in another view, this is essentially what you get with a boutonniere. This joint right here, the PIP, is flexed, meaning it's bent down, but then the tip of the finger is bent upwards into extension. And all of this swelling that we see here on the back of that ring finger knuckle is because that's right at the area where the tendon is located that gets torn causing this injury. Keeping that picture up here for reference, let's take a look at our biodigital anatomy tool to talk about the corresponding anatomy here. A boutonniere deformity occurs with the rupture of the central tendon of the extensor tendons on the back of the finger. So here we're looking at the back side of a hand and all these tendons coming from this muscle are going on to the back side of the fingers and they fire to extend or straighten those fingers out. With a boutonniere deformity, you get an injury to this central band of that extensor mechanism. So when that little tendon is torn, you can no longer extend or straighten this joint of your finger. The reason the finger looks deformed like this is because these central bands that run on the outside basically snap downward and they pull this further out tip of the finger joint backwards. So you get sort of this motion because you get a tear here at the top, those bands around the side, pull backwards to give you that boutonniere deformity position. So looking then here at the finger of Collins, this area where you see all of the swelling on the back of that finger, that's right at the area where that central tendon is coming up to insert. So it's coming down like this, you get those lateral bands that are going to split off around the side to go off and insert on the furthest tip of the finger, and then you get this little central tendon slip that comes through right there. That central tendon slip gets torn, those lateral bands go to the outside, and you get that classic boutonniere deformity. The challenge here for Collins and the Hawks is that this is typically something that you have to brace for an extended period of time to get that central tendon to heal back down in place. Essentially, you have to brace somebody with that joint in extension so that you can promote that scarring at the top of the finger joint. Without the proper treatment, those lateral bands going around the side of the knuckle just get tighter and tighter, the boutonniere deformity gets stiffer and stiffer and it's harder to correct long term. One little quick recall bonus point here, if you remember what happened with Russell Wilson, he suffered a mallet finger. A mallet finger is when you have a tear of this terminal portion of the extensor tendon, as opposed to a boutonniere deformity is where you have a tear of this central slip. So resulting injuries that can give you these deformities of the finger, but an injury to the extensor tendon in two different locations. So far it's unclear what the Hawks are gonna do to treat this, trying to balance having him active down this final stretch of the season with also not doing something that's gonna result in more permanent disability or impairment in that hand. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.